I'm Natasha with Nishka Makes, which is a terrible name for a company that no one can pronounce or spell, but that's okay for now. I'll probably have to change it. I was on Facebook a while ago and saw someone post how uh, they wanted patterns for their laser cutter. And I thought that was a great idea. So I put together a video showing you how you can make patterns yourself using Adobe Illustrator. That's the software I use, a vector software, but I'm sure that any of the things that I do would be directly applicable to Inkscape or other vector softwares. Things are a little different in how the interfaces work or the programs work, but I'm sure that there would be many aspects of it that would be the same across those different platforms. Uh, so this video is going to be showing you how I would go about making patterns and I'll just show you now some of the patterns that I made. For my solid designs, I included a geometric pattern, shiplap, a wave pattern, and two different plaids. In addition, I also included words such as love, welcome, home, welcome home, and a lovely circle frame, and some flowers for styling. At the end of the video, I show you uh, a bunch of different combinations for styling that I liked, including some elements that I had, and of course the flower element that is included in the design. If you're not in the mood to make these files and patterns yourself, I will have all of these available for free at the end of this video. If you want to sign up for my email list, you'll get this file for free, and when I hit 100 subscribers, I'm planning on starting to send out a free file every month. So you don't want to miss out on that, I'm sure. Regardless, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making it. I loved making these awesome files and I just love how they turned out. And I hope that you're able to gain something from this video too. I started out by finding photos for inspiration online. Zooming in very closely on the first one, let's get started. My first step was to create a box and I held down shift so that it would remain perfectly square even though my inspiration photo is not perfectly square. I then went on to create another rectangle shape. I used the white mouse to then select the two bottommost points, held shift down, and dragged it over until it lined up with the diagonal lines that it needed to line up. I then held option shift and dragged the item until I had duplicated it in approximately the correct spot. And then Command D duplicates all of those lines in exactly the correct position that they need to be. I dragged it down to duplicate it that way and lined it up, deleted the piece I used to align, and then did the same thing again. And then went back and deleted that alignment. Now I'm going to copy this, drag it over, because we don't need all these extra tails here. Select all of them, Pathfinder. Oh, I always like to put the background a different color so that I can see what I want to get rid of quite easily. Select that, select the same fill color, delete it, and now delete all your extra little points. And I'm using the white uh, cursor again so that I just delete those extra pieces. Now I'm going to copy this whole thing again. I just want it to be a different color so I can see a little better. Option shift, drag it again, and I'm going to push command D, duplicate it again. But first I want to fill in that remaining piece. Okay, I'm going to go up to Flip it, transform, reflect, vertical, perfect. All right, copy and paste that again with my option shift and drag and then command D to duplicate it again. I'm gonna go down to the bottom, delete that extra bit and we are good. I'm gonna pathfinder it together so it's one solid object. But I'm observing that those things are going to be kind of dainty as far as the laser is concerned. All those little tiny areas, that's going to be really fragile. So I think I'm going to add 
some borders to hold it all together, and also some borders between or lines between to uh, strengthen it up. So we're going to do that now. So with this next design, I'm just going to start it out the same way I started out the first one. Drawing shapes, in this case rectangles that fit approximately what I want, pasting them where I want them, using Option Shift to drag them, using C Command D to duplicate them in exactly the same spot as the last. If you hold Shift down while you drag, it will rotate in 90 degree angles. Copying and pasting again. Here we go with the little shapes. Again, we're gonna copy and paste in place. Option or Command C is copy. And I believe you hold down Shift, Command, or Option and V in order to paste in place. I do not know off the top of my head, but it's one of those. In my next video, I will have my hotkeys display on my screen. Every time I push them. With this gorgeous design, going to start out the same way, make a rectangle, rotate it, put it in its place, stretch it out so it fits how we want it. You know, I just learned what this, what this pattern was called like a couple of days ago. Is it called chevron? I don't remember. I saw a Paleolithic carving on a reindeer toe bone that they said was in this chevron pattern, which was quite fascinating. So just so you know, humans have been making this pattern for thousands and thousands of years, and there's a reindeer toe bone somewhere with this pattern on it. I don't know if it's called chevron though. I can't remember what chevron is supposed to be. Here we're copying, moving it again. In this case, I wasn't able to use command D, or oh, wait a minute. Yes, I was. Sorry. But I wasn't able to drag over with the shift key because they didn't line up perfectly. Converting this to outlines. I've got the basic shape, so I'm going to move on to the next shape and come back to that. Because we do have a lot of work to do on this still to get it ready for laser cutting. We're going to come back to that. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to use the pen tool to make this lovely swirly pattern. Click P, hotkey hot P, to create, uh, to use the pen tool. And uh, just kind of watch how I'm using the pen tool and dragging it here. Taking me a couple tries to get it exactly how I want it. But uh, yeah, just see how we're doing this. You click a point and then I'm pushing V to take, go back to a regular mouse and then P again to start a new line without having to, without it connecting automatically. Click the next point, drag it, move on to the next, and we're still going with the pen tool. Pen tool is amazing, so good for everything. If there's any skill you need to learn, it's to use the pen tool. I'm just getting these approximate, I'm not looking to get this exact. Close is good enough. Make the stroke a little bigger so I can see what we're working with. Now we're going to add these little bits here. And I'm not connecting it immediately because sometimes if you're using the pen tool, it will just add to the previous line. Rather than creating a new line, it's just going to add a point. So I like to start off the line a little bit because I'm tired of constantly deleting points. However, in the end game, we do need the lines to cross over each other. When we use the Pathfinder tool, they aren't going to cut out properly. You can see that this is the case here. I did not make sure they were crossed over, so now I have to go back through and adjust all my lines. Now I made a box, I Pathfindered everything, and now I am deleting the spaces between like I'm deleted those extra little areas and I'm moving each piece up one so we have a gap. Just up a little bit and down as the case may be.
This next one is going to be a quick, easy, and fun one. We're just making some lines. Boom. Done. Now it's time to crop our patterns to circles. We're going to take our first kind of checkerboard pattern, put a circle on it, and we're going to pathfinder it out. Put a circle around it, put an offset path so we have a border. Pathfinder those out, remove the inner circle. But it looks a little bare. We need to add some lines. So now I'm going to draw my lines that I want to score. I'm going to again use my command D to duplicate. Put them where I want them. Pathfinder with that border. Delete the excess lines. And now we got to go through and delete all the extra lines because this has multiple lines on each piece. So I'm going to go in and first I'm going to use the scissors tool to break the line at each point and then I'm going to delete each and every extra box individually and if you look very carefully from this distance you can see the overlapping lines. They're faintly darker than the single lines and we want a single line. We don't want to score more than once. So I'm going through and very carefully deleting each extra duplicate line. So we only want one. And here we got to add some points, use the scissors tool, and delete the extra lines. On the tips of all these points, I'm getting rid of that because that doesn't need to score. That's going to cut. I could just leave it, but it's cleaner this way. All right, now we're placing that in position. Now I made the double hoop border by making two circles, overlapping them and pathfindering them together. Now, time to cut this as well. Pathfindered it and deleted all the excess lines. Deleted all the glue. And then I wanted to make a border. So I put a circle, then I put an offset path, and then I merge that all together with the pathfinder. Next one, I'm going to stretch it so it's big enough. Again, cut it with the pathfinder, delete all the extra pieces. And I am kind of going through some of these things quickly. So if you want me to make a video about any of these things in depth, please let me know. Now again, we're scoring this and I do not want those extra end pieces. So I'm taking the scissors tool cutting the points and deleting the extra little lines. Pasting in that circle again, that's going to be our cut path and the inner lines will be strokes. Thought the 
chevron pattern might be easier to make if I just do the stroke and then delete the appropriate pieces. So that has ended up being what I, what I did. Oh, you know, I completely forgot about the chevron. Sorry guys, I forgot to make that one. I ended up making this one instead. Sorry guys, but it's still a cool story about the deer toes. Time to stick in some words. So here we've got home, welcome, love, all those fun words. And of course you can, you can make them put in whatever words you want. Those are the ones I chose. I make my interior lines blue and my exterior lines black and my score lines red. That allows me to easily and quickly control which pieces cut when. I like to do interior cuts before exterior cuts in case the pieces were to drop down and it were to go out of focus. I like to do my score lines first, my interior cuts second, and my exterior cuts final, which you see here in the red, the blue, and the black. I'm using a software called Lightburn to control my laser, and this is where I set the speeds, the powers, uh, the order, and all those things associated with cutting the final product. Thank you and I hope you enjoy.